The story begins with a girl named Lee. She is stuck in a bizarre loop. Each time she closes her eyes, a disturbing dream plays out. While avoiding a crash into a takeout scooter, the bus collides with an oil tank truck, resulting in a catastrophic explosion that takes everyone's lives. Yet, every time she opens her eyes, she's back on that same bus, alive. After the unsettling recurrence happens a third time, Lee realizes she must intervene to break the deadly cycle. Desperate to alter her fate, she rushes to the driver and pleads to be let off. But bus protocol holds firm. It forbids passengers from leaving before scheduled stops. Ignored and physically restrained, she witnesses the bus explode in flames once more. On her fourth awakening, Lee devises a plan. Faking a heart attack, she hopes to trigger an emergency exit. Yet, the nearest hospital is distant, and she must bear until the next scheduled stop. This leaves her trapped on the bus again. A fellow passenger, Xiao, senses the urgency of her situation and convinces the driver to make an exception. Before they can escape, an elderly woman approaches Lee and offers medication. Her husband is a heart patient, and she carries medicines with her all the time. Lee's plan to get out of the bus fails again. Before she can think of an escape plan, the bus explodes again, colliding with an oil tank truck. On her fifth awakening, she decides to give up on forcing her way out. Xiao offers a tissue for her sweat. He accidentally hit her chest with his elbow. He apologizes. He claimed it was unintentional. At that moment, an idea strikes her. Lee accused Xiao of sexually assaulting her urging the driver to stop the bus so she can take him to the police station. In his defense, Xiao insists that the CCTV footage will prove his innocence. However, she remains strict about involving the police. Another passenger records the scenario as evidence of the boy's misbehavior. As the bus stops at a crossing bridge, Lee gets off and decides to take Xiao with her. She claims that she will take him to the police station, but her true motive is to save his life. Once the bus departs, the girl breathes a sigh of relief. However, her smile surprises Xiao. When he inquires, she apologizes for falsely accusing him. Without explaining much, she leaves, and Xiao takes a taxi to work. Meanwhile, Li strolls along the sidewalk until an explosion's distant sound reaches her. Suddenly, a scooter collides with her. She falls on the road, going unconscious and in need of hospitalization. Simultaneously, the bus explosion claimed the lives of all on board. Xiao also succumbs to severe burns, as his taxi was near the explosion. At the hospital, Li sees his pitiful body on the stretcher. As events unfold, the traffic police acquire CCTV footage of Li and Xiao leaving the bus before the explosion. Detecting something suspicious, Officer Jiang Feng from the Criminal Investigation Department initiates an inquiry into the girl. Suffering from a concussion, Lee struggles with memory issues, as Officer Fong persists in his harsh questioning. The situation takes a turn when Deputy Captain Zhang Qing steps in to lead the investigation. Initially struggling to recall the incident, Lee eventually recovers her memory. Despite the seemingly unbelievable nature of her story, Captain Qing attentively listens to her account. The interrogation is abruptly stopped when Captain Qing receives news that the boy's condition is worsening. He is given electric shocks, but he still doesn't survive. As his heartbeat drops to zero, he wakes up again on the bus. He is alive and is sitting next to Li. Xiao realizes he has had a previous conversation with Li, but he struggles to accept the mysterious loop. Simultaneously, Li wakes up and finds herself once again on the bus. She is still trapped in the unending cycle. Xiao is too shocked to grasp the reality of what's happening to him. Observing Zhao's confusion, Li realizes he is also caught in the loop. She tries to reassure him, explaining that they've repeated this encounter multiple times. Despite her efforts, Xiao remains skeptical. He keeps dismissing her claims as nonsensical. Frustrated, he shifts seats, attempting to distance himself from the bizarre situation. As Xiao experiences flashbacks of their prior interactions, he struggles to grapple with the strange circumstances. In an attempt to break free from the confusion, Xiao decides to leave the bus. Upon learning that the bus won't stop until the next station, he forcefully tries to open the bus door. Meanwhile, Li attempts to show him that she's been through these strategies before. While Xiao stirs up trouble, another passenger knocks him to the ground. In the midst of this chaos, the bus collides with an oil tank. It results in an explosion. The duo finds themselves alive on the bus once again. Still wrestling with the situation, Xiao tries to flee the bus. Initially attempting to jump out the window, he realizes it's too small to pass through. As he uses a hammer to break the window, an alarm goes off. 
as everyone watches him shatter the glass. Before he can leap out, they manage to pull him back in. Meanwhile, Li informs Xiao that she has already employed these tactics and is ahead of him. With the impending explosion, she urges Xiao not to act impulsively the next time they wake up. Post-explosion, Xiao finally grasps the need to stay calm for problem-solving. It's at this moment that Li discloses how she managed to exit the bus earlier by framing him. However, the loop didn't break and was transferred to him. Undeterred, Li devises a new strategy. Instead of leaving the bus, she aims to prevent the collision with the oil tank. Acting out a heartache, she requests the driver to stop for fresh air. However, the driver insists on waiting. Her plan fails again when an elderly passenger offers her medication, an aspect she overlooked. Left with no choice, the duo decides to warn the driver to slow down and prevent the collision. Meanwhile, the drivers of the tanker truck and takeout scooter are en route to the accident site. As the takeout scooter approaches the bus, Xiao alerts the driver about the impending collision. The bus and oil tanker come to a stop just in time, preventing the explosion. Xiao and Li breathe a sigh of relief thinking the cycle has finally ended. Suddenly, Li hears a ringtone similar to the first explosion. Soon after, the bus is engulfed in another blast. Once again, Xiao and Li find themselves in the loop. It's then that Li realizes the cause of the explosion is not a collision but a bomb. The ringtone occurred once before when she wasn't bothering the driver to leave the bus. When she did, the ringtone never resurfaced. Left with no alternative, their only option is to exit the bus. Employing the same technique, Li accused Xiao of sexually assaulting her. It allows them to leave the bus successfully. Without wasting time, she contacts the police and reports a bomb on the bus. The police promptly respond, heading to inspect the bus. However, the bus explodes before they reach it. Captain Ching attempts to call the same number, but Li has switched off the phone. While she doesn't answer, the police now have their number and CCTV footage. It provides them with enough leads for further investigation into the explosion and to track down the duo. Meanwhile, Li and Xiao analyze their time on the bus in an attempt to find an escape from the loop. They jot down the timings of each explosion on a page. As they analyze their experiences, a pattern emerges. They consistently wake up one minute after the time they woke up in the previous loop. Despite engaging in a thorough discussion, the duo struggles to comprehend how to break the loop. Frustrated, Xiao discards the paper into the dustbin. Both are aware that the police will eventually catch up with them, prompting them to devise a plan for the impending interrogation. Amid their planning, Xiao decides to spill the truth about the loop. However, Li insists on withholding the information. She believes revealing the loop would make them suspects in the explosions, as anyone would unlikely believe their extraordinary story. Soon, Captain Cheng and Officer Fong take them to the police station for interrogation. Both are questioned about how they knew there was a bomb on the bus without actually seeing it. Initially hesitant, they eventually reveal the truth. They share with their respective interrogators the details of how the loops began, when it ended, and everything that unfolds between their awakening and the eventual explosion. As anticipated, their extraordinary story is met with skepticism. The director of the department, Miss Du, becomes involved in the case and personally interrogates the duo. However, she fails to extract any satisfactory answers from them. As Lee dozes off on the chair, she wakes up once again on the bus. She is still trapped in the loop. This time, she is determined to save lives. She decides to alert everyone about the bomb to prevent casualties and avoid suspicion. She loudly informs the passengers about the bomb. However, the bomb detonates just then, engulfing everyone in flames. Upon waking up again, the duo realizes that someone intentionally triggered the bomb. Now, understanding the need for a silent approach, they begin eliminating suspects. Excluding the two elderly individuals from their list, Xiao and Li analyze the passengers to identify the one carrying the bomb. Xiao observes a person with a black bag and a mask at the end of the bus who hasn't boarded yet. Knowing that each loop starts one minute before the previous one, they leave the bus at the next stop. The suspicious man then enters the bus. Once the bus departs, Li promptly calls the police. She provides them with information about the bomb and the suspicious individual now on the bus. Xiao expresses dissatisfaction with the decision, fearing the police will suspect them again. However, Li is willing to be a suspect if it means saving the lives of the passengers. Meanwhile, Captain Ching arrives with his team at the Cross River Bridge to intercept the potential explosion. The bus is stopped, and as the officers try to investigate, the bomb detonates. 
Officer Feng's life is killed in the explosion, Captain Cheng attempts to contact Officer Feng, but he doesn't respond. Simultaneously, Xiao reads the news of the explosion and feels a sense of guilt for leaving Li alone in the situation. Li undergoes another round of interrogation by Captain Cheng. He is still suspicious, especially after finding CCTV footage of Xiao. Meanwhile, Xiao calls Li, but she hangs up to prevent the police from suspecting him further. Concerned for Li and determined to face the situation together this time, Xiao takes some sleeping pills to induce sleep. As he wakes up once again, he apologizes to Li for leaving her alone in the previous cycle. Now, he promises to work with her to bring an end to this loop and ensure the safety of the passengers. In their quest to identify the bomb carrier, Xiao and Li initially suspect the man with the black bag. To get closer, Li pretends to be Xiao's girlfriend. They strategically position themselves near the masked man, who clutches his bag tightly. His actions raise suspicions. Seizing an opportunity, the duo attempts to grab his bag. However, before they can open it, the bomb detonates once more. The duo wakes up again in the next cycle. As the masked man boards the bus, Xiao accuses him of taking photographs of Li. As they try to inspect his bag, the strange man guards it suspiciously. The driver and other passengers get involved. Amid the confrontation, the masked man experiences an asthmatic attack. Despite the attack, he refuses to open the bag to retrieve his inhaler. The bus explodes again, solidifying the duo's belief that the masked man is indeed behind the explosion. Upon waking up once more, Xiao and Li decide to implement a different strategy. As the masked man is about to board the bus, Li stands in his way. It provides Xiao with an opportunity to grab him from behind. They successfully apprehend the guy, and Li proceeds to inspect his bag. To their surprise, they find a cat inside. He was hiding it because pets aren't allowed on the bus. The cat leaps out and roams away. Li and Xiao assist the guy in locating his cat. While they are conversing with the man, the bus explodes. The smoke is visible from afar. Realizing they still need to identify the culprit, Li and Xiao quickly leave. Meanwhile, the masked guy is confused by the explosion and the duo's reaction. Later, Li urges Xiao to find the masked man. She suspects that he might have entered the loop with them. She suggests they prepare him in advance to avoid wasting time attempting to exit the bus on his own. The masked guy, Lu Di, becomes suspicious of Li and Zhao's behavior surrounding the explosion. Meanwhile, the duo takes advantage of their situation by ordering a plethora of delicious food. It turns out that they can order anything without financial consequences in the next cycle. At the site of the explosion, a victim's fellow streamer creates a video documenting the incident. Observing the video, the duo gains an idea. They decide to visit the memorial site, hoping to understand the passengers' personalities better. This insight helps them identify who is carrying the bomb in subsequent cycles. Simultaneously, Lu Deed approaches them, convinced that the duo holds information regarding the explosion. Despite Li and Zhao's claims of innocence, Lu Di remains skeptical and attempts to involve the authorities. However, in light of their persistence, Lu Di opts for a private meeting with them. Lu Di takes Li and Xiao to his specifically rented apartment, primarily meant for his cats. Due to his asthma, his mother takes extra care of him, but this excessive attention leaves Di feeling suffocated. When questioned, Li reveals the truth about their experience in the loop. To their surprise, Lu Di turns out to be a genuinely nice guy. He not only believes their story, but also shows them a book that discusses the study of loops, confirming their existence. The trio begins analyzing the explosion case. They focus on the four passengers with bags, any of whom could be carrying the bomb. Their meeting is interrupted when Lu Di receives a call from his mother. In a generous gesture, Lu Di offers Li and Xiao his room as they have nowhere to stay. Grateful, the duo checks into the room and starts their research on the explosion. Meanwhile, Lu Di returns home and documents in his diary his desire to enter the loop with Li and Xiao. Excited for an adventure his mother had always prohibited, he looks forward to saving the world alongside them. When director Du reviews the CCTV footage showing Li and Xiao forcibly holding Lu Di, she decides to call them in for interrogation. Lu Di clarifies the misunderstanding, explaining that Li and Xiao mistook his bag for theirs. However, he also goes on to praise the duo. He emphasizes that they are nice people who assisted him in finding his cat. Li and Xiao are summoned by the police, where they express their suspicions regarding Ma Guqiang. He is the old man with the plastic sack. Learning his name, they discover he was sentenced to nine years in jail for accidentally causing someone's death. 
Ma Guichan's grieving wife and son believe the victim's family might have planted the bomb to seek revenge. By overhearing their conversation, Lee gets the whole story. Following the trio's interrogation, Captain Ching decides to release them. He finds them seemingly innocent. However, the situation takes a turn when Lu Di's mother arrives at the police station with his diary. She reveals that Li and Xiao were aware of the bomb. Captain Ching overhears this conversation, realizing there's more to the story. The duo is interrogated again. Left with no other choice, they begin recounting their loop story. Despite Di's insistence on the loop, the police remain skeptical. As midnight approaches, the day resets. Xiao and Li find themselves back on the bus once again. Upon waking up, Li and Xiao decide to test their second suspect, Ma, to verify if there are truly watermelons in his sack. Xiao silently approaches him. The man reacts protectively, hinting at something worth hiding. At the next bus stop, D boards the bus. However, it turns out that he has not entered the loop. Unable to rely on his help, they decide to take matters into their own hands. Xiao initiates a pretend fight with Li during which he kicks the watermelons. Unfortunately, the fruits break, revealing only watermelons and not the bomb. Angered, Ma knocks Xiao to the floor, but with the assistance of other passengers, the situation is resolved without escalating further. As Ma takes out his watermelons, Li approaches him and offers sympathy. Ma opens up about taking the watermelons for his son, who loved them, unable to leave the broken watermelons as they are. He distributes slices to every passenger. Soon after, the bomb explodes, resetting Li and Xiao into another cycle. The duo shifts their focus to two potential suspects, Xiao, the elderly man with the red suitcase, and Tao, the woman carrying a red plastic bag. They find Tao more suspicious, prompting them to prioritize her investigation. Approaching her, Li requests a sanitary pad as an excuse to inspect the bag closely. Despite Tao's chilly demeanor, Li persists in her search for the bomb. She forcefully examines the bag, but the woman remains calm. Inside, she finds a pressure cooker, and according to Tao, there is meat inside. Noticing the woman's calm reaction, the duo temporarily removes her from the suspect list. They reason that if there were a bomb, she would likely have protected it. Now left with Jiao as the main focus, Xiao decides to dispose of his suitcase at the next stop. If an explosion occurs, they would then consider Tao again as a suspect. The upcoming cycle is expected to start earlier than the previous one. It offers them time to intercept Tao before she boards the bus and potentially prevent the explosion. As they gear up to toss Jiao's suitcase at the upcoming stop, the elderly man surprises Li by touching her bag to get her attention. Opening his own suitcase, he finds sanitary pads mixed in with his belongings. It clearly indicates he doesn't possess a bomb. With this revelation, Xiao promptly escorts Li off the bus and shifts his focus to the woman's plastic bag. However, as Xiao is about to seize the bag, the woman catches his eye and removes the whistle from the cooker. In a sudden and intense detonation, the bomb goes off and results in a significant explosion. Li awakens in the next cycle, but Xiao remains unresponsive. Concerned, she attempts to rouse him. A gathering of passengers surrounds them, all trying to help. Luckily, Xiao eventually wakes up, providing a sigh of relief for Li. The duo realizes that the cycle has started at the same time as the previous one, without a minute's difference. This leads them to believe that if the time isn't reduced, it might be their last chance. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Li has now decided to stay on board. Unlike the previous time when she was desperate to leave the bus, she now wants to stay and save the other passengers from the imminent explosion. Though it is their last chance to leave the bus, it is everyone else's last chance to live. At the next stop, the duo pretends to have lost something on the bus floor. They initiate their fake search. As they approach Tao, they attempt to grab the cooker. Xiao positions himself to block her way while Li seizes the cooker. However, Tao reacts swiftly. She takes out her dagger from her pocket. She stabs Xiao in the chest, causing significant bleeding. As Li is caught off guard, she loses control of the cooker. Tao then stabs her in the neck, incapacitating her. With the duo neutralized, Tao removes the cooker's whistle and triggers the bomb to explode. In the next cycle, the duo shares an embrace. They are still wrestling with the memory of witnessing each other's demise at the hands of the woman. They find solace in each other's company and plan their next move. Xiao is cautious about risking their lives further. He questions the worth of another attempt, 
while Lee remains determined to make another try. As they approach the decision to leave the bus, Lee has a change of heart. She re-enters the bus, resolved to prevent the impending explosion. Acting quickly, she forcefully knocks Tao's head against a seat and makes a move for the cooker. In a desperate bid to save the bomb, Tao draws her dagger and launches an attack on Lee. Xiao intervenes, taking the brunt of the assault and sustaining injuries in the process. In a surprising turn of events, Xiao manages to gain the upper hand in the confrontation. In the struggle, Tao was inadvertently stabbed. Xiao finds himself unintentionally portrayed as the attacker. The surrounding passengers witness the chaotic scene and perceive Xiao as a criminal, oblivious to the true nature of the unfolding plot. Seizing the moment, Xiao and Li hurriedly exit the bus. Just then, the bus explodes, leaving a trail of confusion and misunderstanding among the onlookers. To escape the police pursuit, the duo opts for a low profile. They take refuge in a truck. Considering the possibility that this might be the final cycle, Li could choose to part ways with Xiao to distance herself from the impending legal consequences. Given Zhao's murder conviction and subsequent status as a wanted person, separating from him would mean avoiding involvement in the mess. Despite the option to go their separate ways, Li decides to stand steadfastly by Zhao's side. She is determined to face the challenges together. In a bid to protect her, Xiao suggests that Li claims to be his hostage once they encounter the police. This tactical move could potentially help her escape legal consequences. However, Li refuses to comply with this plan. As Captain Ching intensifies the search for the duo, Xiao and Li decide to seek refuge in Di's apartment to alter their appearance. Xiao cleans off the blood stains, while Li searches through the apartment for a medical kit. But she doesn't find one. Opting for a disguise, she dons one of Di's wigs and heads to the pharmacy to purchase bandages. While at the pharmacy, she catches a glimpse of the news and discovers that the video of her outside the bus has gone viral. The entire city is now on the lookout for them. Returning to the apartment, she shares the unsettling news with Xiao. As the police close in on their location, they find the apartment deserted. The duo has already sought refuge on the building's roof. On the rooftop, Xiao accesses the news on Di's tablet. He is shocked to discover that he is being labeled a bomber and is also facing public hatred for his work in game design. Later that day, Xiao decides to seek refuge at the place of his friend and colleague, Lu Peng. However, the reunion takes an unexpected turn as Peng brands him a murderer without giving Xiao a chance to explain. He demands that Xiao should surrender. Xiao urges Peng to delete any information related to him in the game studio, but Peng refuses. He displays a complete lack of trust, accusing Xiao of jeopardizing their shared future in the gaming studio and international collaborations. Peng states that Xiao only cares about himself. Disheartened by Peng's attitude, Xiao leaves the apartment. Captain Cheng and his men later arrive to question Peng about Xiao's whereabouts, but Peng doesn't know where he is headed. That night, Xiao opens up to Li. He confesses his feelings for her. The two share an embrace, unaware of the uncertainties that lie ahead. As the night progresses, it becomes apparent that this cycle isn't their last. Xiao experiences a disturbing nightmare, and upon waking, feels fatigued. The familiar cycle restarts, with Xiao and Li back on the bus. Realizing the urgency of preventing casualties, Xiao devises a plan to discreetly inform all the passengers about the potential bomb. Instead of individually approaching each person, they decide on a covert strategy. Xiao types a message on his phone, explaining the need for everyone to exit the bus at the next stop under the guise of a group activity. The actual intention is to convey the bomb threat without causing panic. Lee expresses concern for the driver, anticipating the difficulty of convincing him to leave the bus. However, Xiao believes that this is the most viable option to minimize casualties. The duo initiates their plan by showing the message to each passenger, who seems to grasp the urgency. To avoid raising suspicions, Lee also shares a picture with Tao. She conveys the idea of an activity at the upcoming stop. As they approach the bus stop, Lee intercepts D and prevents him from boarding. Meanwhile, other passengers respond to Lee's instructions. They begin leaving the bus in a hurry, but the woman presses the button and the bus explodes once again. Recognizing the need for a new approach, Xiao and Lee formulate a fresh strategy for the next cycle. This time, Lee proposes to seek help from the other passengers. The plan involves informing them about Tao's possession of a bomb and the danger she poses. Two capable men among the passengers restrain Tao, 
while Lee seizes the cooker and disposes of it in the river. To execute this plan, they need the driver's cooperation to position the bus close to the bridge's railings. It is to ensure that if any potential explosion occurs, it occurs harmlessly in the water. Xiao starts by confiding in Mr. Jiao and informing him about Tao's dangerous possession. To gain Di's trust, Xiao reveals his secrets, such as having an apartment for cats and even sharing his passcode. Impressed by the credibility of Zhao's words, Di decides to trust the duo and consider their warning seriously. In a desperate attempt to prevent disaster, Li takes it upon herself to inform the driver about the perilous situation. She explains the gravity of the woman possessing a bomb and outlines the plan to detain her, aiming to throw the bomb into the river. The driver is initially shot, but listens carefully as Li lays out the urgency of the matter. As the bus reaches the bridge, Xiao and Mr. Jiao manage to tightly restrain Tao. Di holds the cooker containing the bomb. Li instructs the driver to pull over so they can execute their plan and dispose of the bomb safely. However, to Li's horror, the woman begins criticizing the driver, accusing him of being a coward. It dawns on Lee that the driver is part of Tao's plot. With only two minutes left before the bomb's detonation, the driver abruptly stops the bus in the middle of the bridge. Despite Lee's urgent pleas, the driver appears to be in shock or unresponsive. With time running out, Xiao takes decisive action. He rises, shatters the bus window, and leaps outside in an attempt to distance the bomb from the bus. Before he can carry out his plan, the bomb detonates. Li awakens to the ugly reality. She grapples with the shocking revelation that the bus driver, Mr. Wang, is behind the explosion. Memories flood back to the times when she used to frequently take the bus, recalling a moment when Mr. Wang helped her find a lost wallet. He had always been humble and kind during their interactions. Now, faced with the harsh truth, Li struggles to comprehend why he would orchestrate such destructive acts. Unable to contain her confusion and frustration, Li approaches Mr. Wang and recollects the times they shared. She questions his abrupt change in character, asking if he is somehow threatened by the woman with the bomb. However, in her impulsive attempt to confront him, Li fails to consider the potential danger of her words being overheard. Sensing the suspicious exchange between Li and the driver, the woman triggers the bomb and becomes cause of another explosion. In the new cycle, Mr. Wang resumes his routine of picking up the old man and the woman with the bomb at the bus stop. Li attempts to wake Xiao, but he shows signs of growing weaker with each recurring cycle. Upon waking, the duo engages in a discussion to analyze the situation. Xiao speculates that Mr. Wang may have been in charge of measuring the time spent on the journey, as he was driving on this route for years. Additionally, Xiao suspects that Tao is the one responsible for constructing the bomb. To devise a solid plan, the duo decides to leave at the next stop. Li defends the bus driver, suggesting that he may be forced into the plan by Tao. She suggests that Mr. Wang may have let her off the bus twice, because he knew her and wanted to spare her from harm. As the duo converses, the bus once again succumbs to an explosion at 1.45 pm, mirroring the pattern of all previous cycles. Meanwhile, fire trucks are en route to the location of the explosion. A sudden revelation strikes Li as she recalls her previous conversation with Mr. Cheng. According to him, in the event of a potential threat on the bus, the driver is instructed to call the police and secure the doors. This realization dawns on Li, making her certain that Mr. Wang deliberately let her off the bus to safeguard her life. Motivated to learn more about the mysterious driver, the duo decides to visit his company. They pose as reporters. However, due to the short notice, the manager only agrees to share basic details about Mr. Wang. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted by another employee who informs the manager about the recent explosion. Suspicion falls on Li and Xiao as the manager rushes to confront them. However, upon returning to the office, he finds nothing but Mr. Wang's open application form. From the limited information available, the duo learns basic details about Wang's life. He left his hometown four years ago, quit his previous job as a truck driver, and moved to the new city to become a bus driver. His application mentions that the reason for his migration is the transfer of his wife. Lee begins to suspect that the woman with the bomb might be Wang's wife. However, the puzzle deepens as they wonder why Wang, if married, was living in a hostel rather than with his spouse. In an attempt to uncover more clues, the duo visits the hostel and locates Wang's room. Without a key to gain access, Xiao devises a plan. Pretending to be Wang's nephew, he informs Wang's roommate that he's there to collect some belongings on Wang's behalf. 
While Xiao searches for clues, the roommate stands guard, realizing that Xiao may not be able to conduct a thorough investigation, Li takes the initiative. She engages the roommate, referring to Xiao as her boyfriend, and subtly inquires for information about Wang and his wife. During their conversation, the roommate discloses that Wang's wife has some mental health issues. While describing Wang as a kind and humble man, he hints at challenges in their relationship. Meanwhile, Xiao discovers a broken phone in the room. With the stolen phone in hand, the duo leaves the hostel and seeks refuge in a store. Puzzled by the mysterious pattern of the explosions consistently occurring at 1.45 p.m., they discuss the uncanny timing. Unable to determine the reason behind this specific hour, they decide to enlist the help of the police. Their plan is to share their findings with the authorities, hoping that they can help the police narrow down their research. In exchange, they hope the police will assist in swiftly unraveling the mystery behind the consistent timing of the explosions. Soon, Xiao and Li arrive at the police bureau. There, they disclose everything they witnessed and experienced on the bus to Captain Cheng and Director Du. They explain that they left the bus due to fear of a mentally unstable woman who kept muttering about everyone dying at 1.45. Their remarkable recall of minute details about the passengers and the bus itself prompts skeptical questioning from the officers, who find their extensive knowledge suspicious. Despite their efforts to present the information as normal, Officer Fong and his colleague find the level of detail the duo possesses unsettling. Xiao and Li provide further context, emphasizing the connection between the woman and the driver. Officer Fong and his colleague initiate an investigation centered on Wang, following Li's suspicions. As the investigation unfolds, it's revealed that Tao is indeed Wang's wife. Shockingly, investigators uncover Tao's employment history at a chemical plant where she had access to various chemicals and raw materials. In the course of their investigation, the police uncover the tragic history of Wang and his wife. They had a college-going daughter named Wang Meng Meng, who tragically lost her life five years ago in a road accident. In an effort to unravel the mystery behind the consistent timing of the explosions, Director Du orders a search for all accidents occurring at 1.45 p.m. in past years. Their search yields a video documenting Ming Ming's last moments. In the footage, Ming Ming forces the bus driver to stop on the Cross River Bridge. Upon leaving the bus, she is struck by a truck, which leads to her untimely demise. The police now recognize the connection between Ming Ming's death and the recurring explosions occurring on the same date and time as the tragic accident. Upon learning about Ming Ming's tragic death, Li feels a sense of helplessness. She realizes they can't alter the past and can never move Wang from his motive. Faced with the challenge of preventing recurring explosions, they seek the assistance of a police officer to devise a strategy. Li approaches Captain Cheng with a hypothetical scenario, asking him what he would do if the day were to reset and he had the opportunity to change the situation. In response to Li's supposition, Captain Cheng suggests deploying undercover policemen as passengers on the bus at the next stop. This would allow them to formulate a plan based on the officer's seating positions and the timing of events, enabling them to control the suspects and defuse the bomb. In an effort to gain more insight, Li inquires about the circumstances surrounding Meng Ming's death. To her shock, she discovers that Meng Ming died five years ago on the same date and at the same time as the bus explosions. Li then asks Captain Cheng how he would respond to a call from a stranger about a bomb on the bus. Captain Cheng assures her he will believe the caller and take swift action, but he would hold the caller accountable if it turned out to be a prank. To accelerate their response in the next cycle, Xiao requests Captain Cheng's phone number. They intend to personally inform him about the situation as soon as it arises. As the day resets, Zhao's weakened condition becomes even more apparent with a nosebleed. He suspects it's due to the ongoing loop. Recognizing the urgency, they swiftly begin executing their plan. Xiao takes a photo of the woman and sends it to Captain Cheng, alerting him about the impending explosion. Upon receiving Zhao's message, Captain Cheng and his team rush to the next stop. Sensing the gravity of the situation, Li and Xiao embrace each other. They believe that this might be their final cycle. To delay the bus's progress, Li creates a disturbance by accusing Xiao of misconduct. Their altercation distracts the driver's attention, slowing down the bus. Li deliberately prolongs her actions, moving slowly within the bus to provide more time for the police to arrive. Eventually, she pretends to leave the bus but stages another scene by standing in the doorway. She insists that Xiao accompanies her to the police station. Xiao plays along and claims that his flash drive is missing and might have been dropped on the bus. 
In the midst of the stage disturbance, Xiao accuses Li of stealing his flash drive. Recognizing the urgency and the inconvenience, the passengers attempt to resolve the conflict swiftly. Feeling the pressure of time as Wang prepares to depart, Captain Cheng and his officers strategically position themselves at the next stop. They are ready to intercept the bus. However, upon reaching the stop, Wang becomes suspicious upon seeing the black cars and the well-dressed officers. His instincts kick in. Sensing something amiss, he refuses to stop the bus, continuing to race ahead. The officers on foot give chase, but Wang remains determined not to stop. The police cars strategically position themselves on the bridge, anticipating the bus's arrival. Additional police vehicles tail the bus, preventing it from taking any detours. Amidst the confrontation, Tao attempts to act. Xiao successfully intervenes, sustaining injuries in the process. With the assistance of other passengers, Xiao manages to subdue Tao. They prevent her from escalating the situation further. The erratic woman continues to shout, insisting that Wang must not stop the bus. Simultaneously, Li pleads with Mr. Wang to stop the bus. She implores him to consider the lives of the passengers, asserting that what happened to Meng Meng was a tragic accident and nobody on board is responsible for it. Hearing his daughter's name, Wang becomes agitated. In a desperate attempt to connect with Wang, Xiao reveals knowledge of Meng Meng and suggests reopening the investigation into her death. However, Wang heatedly rejects the idea. He expresses his distrust of the police. Driven by a desperate desire to reunite with their daughter in the afterlife, Wang accelerates the bus. He is heading toward the waiting police cars, determined to stop him. The bus's tires are shredded by the spike strip laid down by the police. After colliding with a police car, the bus grinds to a halt. Only one minute is remaining until the explosion. In a swift move, Xiao breaks the bus window and hands the cooker to Captain Cheng. In a race against time, Captain Cheng rushes to the side of the bridge to dispose of the bomb. However, before he can drop it into the water, the bomb detonates and causes a fatal injury to Captain Cheng. While Xiao and Li successfully manage to save the passengers, the weight of Captain Cheng's injuries weighs heavily on them. On the bridge, Tao is arrested, her unstable mind conjuring visions of Meng Meng smiling at her. The flashback reveals the aftermath of Meng Meng's tragic death. Tao and Wang would often travel on the same bus, haunted by their loss. When they encountered girls resembling Meng Meng's age, Tao would approach them. She would inquire if anyone harassed them on the bus. Her questions would unsettle the passengers, prompting the driver to contact the authorities. In response to the recurring disturbances, the police warned Tao against causing disruptions. They threatened her with legal consequences if she persisted. Instead of responding, Tao would simply move away from them. She gazed into the sky, seemingly lost in her own thoughts and anguish over the loss of Meng Meng. It was not the first time Tao did that. Since Meng Meng's case was closed, the couple took matters into their own hands and began their investigation. They wanted to know why Meng Meng decided to get off the bus in the middle of the bridge. The bus company offered them compensation. The bus driver also admitted negligence and was dismissed from his position. Despite this, Tao refused to close the case. One day, she finally understood why Meng Meng left the bus abruptly. In the police station, she overheard discussions about a sex assaulter targeting women on bus number 45. She became convinced that Meng Meng was a victim of harassment. Tao began waiting for bus 45, determined to identify the molester. However, her constant investigations led to the bus driver avoiding them and driving away upon their approach. While wandering on the bridge where their daughter met her fate, Wang urged Tao to move forward. He suggested they should let go and lead normal lives. However, Tao remains steadfast in her grief. She is unwilling to forget their daughter's death. Despite Wang's attempts to reason with her, she would cover her ears, unwilling to embrace any perspective that deviated from her quest for justice and closure. During one of her lectures, Tao catches a student watching CCTV footage of Meng Meng. Tao was angered that Wang hadn't answered their daughter's calls and held him responsible for not preventing Meng Meng from leaving the bus. Despite Wang's desire to move on, Tao's anger made him hate himself for something unintentional. She fueled his sense of revenge, and her declining mental health began to affect him profoundly. In a bid to be closer to their daughter, the duo relocated to the city where Meng Meng lived. Under Tao's influence, Wang took on the role of the bus driver on the same route. 
Surprisingly, the bus company's owner hired Wang without even recognizing the connection to the legal battle related to Mingming's death. This oversight intensified Wang's rage, as he realized that Mingming's tragic story had faded from people's memories. Consumed by her grief and obsession with revenge, Tao rented a garage where she continued her experiments in bomb making. One fateful night, she succeeded in creating a bomb. Witnessing her dangerous pursuits, Wang once again attempted to reason with her. He shared a dream he had, where Meng Ming appeared, seemingly urging them to live well and move on. Tao had no problem with Wang living a good life. She was ready for the divorce, but she wasn't prepared to let go of the incident that happened five years ago. Back in the present day, the authorities have brought the couple to the police station for questioning. Simultaneously, Xiao is hospitalized due to a severe arm injury from a dagger, resulting in significant blood loss. Meanwhile, within the hospital confines, Li delves into online sources to uncover information about Meng Meng. She stumbles upon CCTV footage showing Meng Meng being struck by a bus. The video has gotten a barrage of negative comments. Li thinks about how Meng Meng's parents might react upon reading such comments. While viewing the footage, Li begins to suspect that there might be more to Meng Meng's story than what meets the eye. In the interrogation room, Wang and Tao decide to shoulder the blame individually in an attempt to protect their partners. Both confess to the authorities that they were solely responsible for creating the explosive device, and force the other into participating in the plan. Following the tragic turn of events, the medical team exits the operating theater with the devastating news. Captain Ching didn't survive the explosion, his passing leaves his wife, and Officer Fong shattered. Driven by an urgent need to uncover the cause behind the blast, Officer Fong tends to his injuries and approaches Li and Xiao in their room. His sole purpose is to understand how the pair discovered the presence of the bomb on the bus and obtained Captain Cheng's phone number. Xiao recounts his prior encounter with Captain Cheng, yet Officer Fong remains unsatisfied with this explanation. Meanwhile, Li is deeply stunned and shaken by the news of Captain Cheng's death. In the ongoing interrogation, Director Du recognizes the necessity of revisiting Meng Ming's case. They repeatedly review the video depicting the incident inside the bus to comprehend the unfolding events. Subsequently, the bus driver is summoned to provide his account. According to the driver, Meng Meng forcefully insisted on leaving the bus, resorting to touching the steering wheel when he resisted. This posed a potential threat to the safety of other passengers, forcing him to surrender and allow her to leave. Upon inspecting the end of the video, Director Du observes that Meng Meng was fixated on someone or something, raising further questions about the circumstances surrounding her actions. On a different front, Xiao and Li start devising their next course of action, recognizing that unraveling the truth behind Ming Ming's death is crucial to preventing Wang from detonating the bomb, Li decides to reach out to her counselor, Ms. Wu. Since Meng Meng was a student at the same college, Li believes Ms. Wu might possess insights into the rumors and gossip surrounding Ming Ming's demise. Ms. Wu promptly arrives at the hospital, expressing concern for Li's well-being. During their conversation, Li delves into inquiries about Meng Meng. Ms. Wu discloses that Meng Meng was an introverted student who rarely engaged with others, making the idea of her forcefully stopping the bus seem out of character. Ms. Wu is aware of discussions on Meng Meng's death, but mentions that obtaining data from those forums requires approval from the university. As they exchange information, Officer Fong overhears their conversation outside the room. He decides to join their discussion to accelerate the truth-seeking process. Recognizing the importance of checking discussion forums for insights, Officer Fong chooses to assist them. Li urges him to temporarily set aside suspicions and trust them for the sake of uncovering the truth. Putting trust in Li this time, Officer Fong agrees to accompany them to the university administration. The trio departs from the hospital and arrives at the university to delve into the discussion forums. There, they discover unsettling conversations that mischaracterize Meng Meng. Despite her being a victim, people labeled her as a psycho for leaving the bus on the bridge. Xiao directs their attention to comment number 45, which asserts Meng Meng's innocence. According to the comment, there was a lecture on the bus. The university administration steps in to trace the IP address of the person behind comment number 45. Copying the dorm number, Ms. Wu sifts through the files and unveils the name of the student responsible for shedding light on the truth. Meanwhile, Lu Yao, who had been on the bus with Meng Meng, becomes aware of the explosion. The bus number triggers her memory, recalling her frequent rides on that particular bus. Soon after, Yao is approached by Ms. Wu, Li, and Officer Fong. 
They inquire about her comment on the forum and urge her to recount what transpired on the bus that fateful day. Initially hesitant due to fear, Yao is reluctant to disclose information. However, Officer Feng reassures her safety, eventually prompting Yao to reveal a distressing detail. She witnessed a middle-aged man sexually assaulting Meng Meng on the bus that day. Yao recounts the tragic day when Meng Meng lost her life. Seizing an opportunity when some passengers exited the bus, Yao secured a seat, affording her a direct view of Meng Meng. Disturbingly, right before her eyes, the middle-aged man began molesting Meng Meng. Overwhelmed by fear, Yao managed to capture a photograph of the perpetrator as she sat in front of them. However, the intensity of the situation forced her to leave the bus at the next station. She immediately called her mother for support. Concerned for her safety, Yao's mother cautioned her against sharing the information. She feared potential retaliation from the molester. Despite this warning, Yao shared her comment. However, she was met with a barrage of negative remarks blaming her for not intervening. The hostile response left her terrified and reluctant to disclose the details to anyone. Recognizing the importance of the evidence, Lee preserves the photo of the molester in a cloud file. She memorizes the password to access the picture easily in the next cycle. On the flip side, Zhao's condition is getting worse, with blood now coming from his mouth. Officer Fong and Li head back to the hospital, updating another officer on the situation. Meanwhile, Li and Xiao discuss their next move revealing the truth about Wang's daughter's death. This tactic is aimed at gaining some time. With Zhao's health declining, he fears he won't wake up early in the next cycle. He puts the responsibility of stopping the explosion solely on Li. They share a passionate kiss in a heartfelt moment, before the clock resets at midnight. They hope to remember each other when the loop ends. Upon waking, Li finds Xiao too weak to open his eyes. Acting swiftly, she takes Tao's photograph and alerts Captain Ching about the bomb. Captain Cheng and his team promptly leave the police station to reach the bus stop as quickly as possible. Following their previous plan, Li informs Mr. Zhao about the bomb. After briefing Captain Cheng, she shows the message to Di and involves him in the team. Seizing an opportunity, the trio manages to grab Tao. Meanwhile, Di secures the pressure cooker. Another passenger disarms Tao of her dagger, and they all collaborate to restrain her. Witnessing the situation, Wang hits the brakes. It causes everyone to tumble. Tao swiftly recovers and targets Di in an attempt to regain control of the pressure cooker. At that moment, Xiao regains consciousness and intervenes, preventing Tao's movements. Assisting him, the muscular man seizes Tao and restrains her. Meanwhile, Wang collides with the bus with the police vehicles. Officer Fong stops the bus from behind, and Captain Ching arrives, armed. Witnessing this, Wang leaves the driver's seat and heads for the bomb. He successfully grabs the explosive device. However, before he can detonate it, Li shows him the evidence that a man sexually assaulted Meng Meng. Li outlines a plan to reopen Meng Meng's case, using his student's testimony to ensure the perpetrator faces justice. Captain Ching assures Mr. Wang that they will reopen the case. They all urge him to live and witness the molester's conviction. Touched, Wang surrenders and hands the bomb to Captain Cheng. With only seconds remaining, Captain Ching rushes to the bridge's edge and hurls the bomb into the water. The explosion occurs, but this time, no one is harmed. A collective sigh of relief sweeps through the group. Wang and Tao are apprehended. Tao glimpses her daughter on the bridge, smiling at her. With the dust settling, Captain Ching questions the duo about their in-depth knowledge of the passengers and the precise details of the explosion plot. However, this time, he releases them, instructing them to meet at a later date for further discussion. Li and Xiao start suspecting that the loop has concluded. The next day, Xiao wakes up, confirming that the loop has indeed ended. Li embarks on a new day at her university with her friend. Aside from those directly involved, all passengers receive praise from the authorities and are rewarded for their bravery. In jail, Wang confronts his daughter's molester entering captivity. The rest of the passengers revel in the joy of living once more with their loved ones. Mr. Ma hosts a watermelon party with his beloved son. Di celebrates his birthday by receiving a cat as a gift from his now understanding parents. They now recognize the importance of him facing the world for a normal life. The vlogger continues making videos, entertaining his audience. As the drama concludes, Li and Xiao pay their respects at Mingming's grave in the cemetery. The two are seen leaving the cemetery hand in hand, symbolizing a sense of closure and a new beginning. Remember to subscribe to my channel, and we will see you next time.